Hi, I'm Mr. McMillan, the board game professor. I'm here to help you learn a board game in less than five minutes. Today, we're going to learn the game of Forbidden Island. This game, we are a group of adventurers that have landed on an island in search for four treasures. If we find all four of those treasures and get off the island before it floods, we win. This game is a cooperative game for up to four players that takes about a half an hour. So are you ready to get started? Let me show you the setup. First, let's go over the parts and pieces that we will use in this game. All right, let's set up the board. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select our pieces. There are six different options for us. For this purpose of this game, we're gonna assume we're playing with three people. So we're gonna randomly select three of them. So let's go ahead and grab the pilots, the engineer, and the explorer. Um, so these pieces represent the, um, the pawns right here. To place them on the board, you're going to look for the pieces that represent that same color. So um, blue is going to be on Fool's Landing, red is going to be on Bronze Gate, and green is going to be on the Copper Gate. And then we're going to take the treasure cards and we're going to give that a shuffle and we're going to pass two to each player. Now those, um, since it's a cooperative game, those can all be placed um, face up so everyone can see each other's cards because we are going to be working as a team. Um, if you happen to get a water rise like this, go ahead and put that back in the deck and replace it with another card. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to um, select the, the level of the water. And now if you've never played this game before, go and start at the novice level and we will tell more about that later, but go and clip that on there, set that right here and you are ready to play. So the first thing we're gonna do is select the starting player. That happens to be the person last on an island. In our case, let's assume blue is. So she is going to be our starting player. To go ahead and take your, um, uh, your player card, flip it over, and it will uh, describe the order of play and the four possible actions. So um, let's go ahead and play it out and I'll describe the actions as we go. Blue being the first player is trying to um, fix the island, make it not flooded, as well as um, gather enough cards to be able to grab the treasures. So blue is going to take one step here. The second action they're gonna do is shore up the island piece. As being on it, they flip it over, that is not shoring up the island. Then they see an island piece over there, they're going to then shore up that. That is their three actions. In the order to play, the next thing to do is draw two treasure cards. In this case, Pilot, um, um, she received Lion and the Stone. Um, the next thing they're gonna do is to flood. They're gonna take, because this is um, marking two, they're going to flood two pieces, which is the Bronze Gate here and the Temple of the Moon, which is right here. Now play would then at that point pass to green. Green now takes those same actions. Green can take three um, steps. So green's gonna go, let's say one step and then um, shore up this one. Now green also has the special ability of going diagonal. So let's say that their third step's gonna be stepping over there. They then to end their turn will take two cards. They oh, got a special card called a Water Rise. On the Water Rise, there are three special actions you're gonna do. You're going to take your water level, move it up one. You're gonna take the discard of the flood pile. You're gonna shuffle it, and you're gonna place this on top. Then you're going to discard this card. At the end of their turn, they will also flood two island pieces. In this case, the Lost Lagoon. Because the Lost Lagoon was already flooded, it is now lost forever. The second one is the Bronze Gate. The Bronze Gate is right here. It is also now lost forever. Because a police piece was on it, that place can um, move to any adjacent um, place. So let's say red moves down there. Okay, player will uh, continue over to red. Red acknowledges that the, he uh, has a piece that matches the pilot and he wants to give her this card. So on his play, he's gonna move um, his piece to um, the same place as, um, as the pilot in order to hand a card over. So for his play, he's gonna take one action to step here, the second action to trade um, to pass this card along here. Now, Pilot has all four needed to be able to capture this treasure. The third action that they're going to take is to step towards Fool's Landing in this case. Okay, so they're gonna draw two cards and um, then we're gonna flood the two island pieces. Now, Blue's turn. Blue now having all four of these can, for their action, move to a piece that has the same treasure icon on it. So one step, two steps, trade in for three. Now, this piece has been captured and placed on Fool's Landing. 
Play continues in the same manner in which um, until all four of the treasures are added to Fool's Landing and then with a helicopter lift card, then all players with all of these things can exit the island to victory. However, there are three ways that if you don't do that, you can die. The first way is to continue to um, get water rise cards and this ticks all the way up to the death mark. That's one way. Second way is if the Fool's Landing piece becomes flooded and then subsequently lost forever, you lose. The third way is if all of the pathways to Fool's Landing becomes eliminated and there's still a piece remaining out there, they would lose also. Congratulations, you just finished your first class on Forbidden Island. If you'd like to learn more about other board games, subscribe to this channel and keep an eye out for future videos about strategies. All right, keep learning and keep playing.